Woke CEO gets fired from CVS, lost billions pushing her agenda. I'm not the kind of person to say that a woman can't do a certain job. Men and women can do whatever jobs that they're qualified to do. From Bloomberg, CVS CEO ends promising era of women heading pharmacy chains. Women ran CVS, Rite Aid, and Walgreens from 2021 to 2023. With the CVS departure, female CEOs still run 45 of S&P's 500 companies. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with women running companies or doing any kind of job. What is a little bit crazy is how they just keep talking about gender instead of qualifications for people. She was the head of Aetna, which was a big insurance company that did do a merger with CVS. But she also pushed, interestingly, a stupid business agenda as well as a woke agenda. CVS had a background already in being woke. But here's some of the things she did. From Detroit Free Press, CVS Health hires Dr. Jonae Calden to be its first chief health equity officer. Health equity is not something they should be focused on. Quality for everyone is what they should be focused on. And how about this from Fox Business? CVS Health Training tells employees to, quote, understand their privilege and hire based on diversity. Employees were told to understand their privilege and to hire and promote diverse candidates which of course is illegal. Before she was CEO, CVS said they were gonna spend $600 million to promote DEI, not even just inside their company, in outside policies. This is from their website. And this was in July, 2020. Karen Lynch, the CEO of CVS, who was thrown out for her failure, hadn't even got to the company yet. Here's what they were wasting $600 million on. CVS Health is investing nearly $600 million over five years to advance employee, community, and public policy initiatives that address inequality faced by the Black community and other disenfranchised communities. No wonder they're not getting a good return on investment if they're just throwing their money away. From Fortune, what went wrong at CVS? Departing CEO Karen Lynch's reign started brilliantly, then unraveled fast. Nothing starts brilliantly and then unravels fast. Brilliantly would be if you got some results. And when you start somewhere, you can have a lot of great ideas. But if those ideas are impractical, they might sound good. But if you can't carry them out and they don't actually work in the marketplace, it's not going to be brilliant. It's just going to kind of seem brilliant. And then it's going to fall apart once it gets tested by the market. Karen Lynch, a superstar CEO championing the biggest of big ideas, is out. As chief of Corner Drug Store and Health Insurance Colossus CVS, Lynch headed the largest Fortune 500 enterprise as measured by sales of any female CEO, and for years reigned as the most powerful woman in American business. In her first two years after being chosen for the top job in late 2020, Lynch seemed to be on the road to glory. By late 2022, she lifted CVS's share price from $70 to roughly $110. Investors were buying into her daring new strategy, making CVS a one-stop shop for and basic care right in their own neighborhoods, augmented by hands-on data-driven management from their in-house insurer that reminded folks to refill prescriptions and get their annual physical. Lynch pledged to revolutionize healthcare as we know it by repurposing thousands of CVSs, more than 9,000 stores, into either fully dedicated providers of such services as diabetic retinopathy and cholesterol screening, and mental health counseling, or hybrid retail and PC centers called health HUBs. Would you go get mental health counseling at your CVS? Would you trust those people? I mean, it depends on where you go, I suppose. But most of the people that work at CVS, I have to say, are better than the people I've experienced working at Walgreens. I go to a private pharmacy to get any prescriptions that I need for my family. But no, I'm going to say I have not always had stellar experiences going to chain pharmacies to receive services. It seems like, particularly in the pharmacy, they constantly have turnover. The people there lack common sense and don't even seem like they're trained to have customer service skills. But that's just my experience. CVS would then store tons of data on the patient's condition at its insurance arm, whose cost would fall because seniors were getting preventative care that curbed heart disease and other chronic conditions that account for the bulk of our healthcare spending. 
trying to set up a dynamic where you can encourage preventative care in a pharmacy where you're seeing people on a regular basis that have a condition, this is not necessarily a bad idea. The structure of CVS was pretty unique. So to be able to actually pull all of this off, you would have to have like tremendous operational abilities. This is something you would test on a small basis and then try to figure out, hey, how are we going to make this actually work and roll out these successful operations on a larger basis? You can't just do this off the top of your head or say that you want to revolutionize healthcare as we know it. You can say that, but that's like an Elon Musk kind of thing to say, except many times Elon Musk does actually deliver. He's very strong in operations. Apparently, Karen Lynch is not. But preventative health care to save on insurance costs? Yeah, that's good. That's good for everyone. It's good for the individual. Why would anyone want to be sicker than they need to be if they can deal with a problem when it's small instead of a problem when it's big? Rival insurers would also reward CVS with part of the savings they achieve from the spread of primary care from faraway doctor's offices requiring long waits to the CVS just around the block where you could pick up your pills and buy shampoo and candy bars. There is a convenience aspect. It's not a terrible idea, but it's not a good idea unless you can execute on it. There are a lot of incredible things going on in the medical field in terms of cost sharing and sharing and savings of benefits and things like that. Doctors are involved. Hospitals are involved. The government's involved. Those are very good, innovative things. It was an intriguing vision that targeted our hugely expensive, largely consumer-unfriendly healthcare system. But Lynch couldn't fully deliver on the paradigm that's already starting to upend the current regime and where CVS will continue playing a pivotal role going forward, one that will likely determine whether it rebounds from its current tailspin. Because she's really done a lot of damage to this company. I mean, I said billions in the headline for the video, but it's tens of billions that she's cost investors. And when you cost investors money, that affects people's pensions. It affects their personal income. It affects their entire future. It also makes people very stressed out and upset when they lose money because they invested in your stock. But ultimately, it's going to lead to layoffs, cost cuts, restructuring. They may have to sell off parts of their company. Because CVS is not just a drugstore now, they also are part of Aetna and another whole other prescription management business. It's really turned into a huge, difficult to manage business, even if they weren't trying to remake their business model. On October 18th, CVS disclosed that its weak financial performance was even worse than the low expectations that had already pushed big investors, including activist Glenview Capital, to demand changes in the C-suite. That would be the people that are leading the company, CEO, CFO, whoever it's leading the company, we need to have some changes, is what Glenview was saying. The board pre-announced that the earnings for quarter three, that's the last three months, would prove far lower than both the company's forecast and Wall Street's prediction. CBS suggested their earnings per share would be $1.05 to $1.10, well below their consensus of $1.69. That is a massive cut in estimates. These estimates are taken from really good information, and they're usually not nearly that far off, not just for CBS, but for any of these public companies. What caused all the problems? For the most part, extremely tight margins in the health benefits business at Aetna, and especially in its giant Medicare Advantage franchise. CVS disclosed that its medical cost ratio of premiums to expenses had soared from an estimated 91% to 95%. Quote, that represents some combination of providing benefits that are too rich and underpricing premiums. The premium is the amount that you pay for the insurance. The insurance company's entire business, and this is their Aetna division, but it's every insurance company, is to make sure that the money you take in is less than the money you have to pay out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But when you can't manage your main insurance business, you shouldn't be in all these other businesses either. There is talk of whether or not maybe CVS will split itself back off and just focus on pharmacies, but there are people saying it's less likely now that they change management again. It's just a complete disaster. The same press release that announced their earnings were going to be way off also announced that Karen Lynch, the CEO, quote, stepped down from her position in agreement with the company's board of directors and will be replaced by David Joyner, a CVS veteran who'd been heading Caremark, the pharmacy benefits business, another major business that they're in. So where did she screw up the most? A trifecta of problems, some that started before she took the top job 
ended in a rain that appeared to start brilliantly and then unraveled fast. The first was CVS's errors in vastly overpaying for acquisitions, a practice that piled on amounts of capital so huge that only magical performance could provide shareholders with decent returns going forward. In the years following its successful acquisition of Caremark in 2007, CVS was doing really well. Ten years later, by late 2017, its share price had jumped from around $25 to $75. Then it unveiled its acquisition of Aetna, where Lynch had risen to the position of heir apparent based on her skill in building the Medicare Advantage side. And that Medicare Advantage business is very profitable when it works, but it's not profitable when it doesn't work. CVS paid a gigantic $68 billion, or a 73% premium over the current stock price for Aetna. The day of the announcement, the two companies boasted a combined market capitalization of $128 billion. Proof that CVS hasn't come close to generating the extra profits needed to cover that giant price, its valuation now stands at just $76 billion, only slightly higher than what it paid for Aetna. So it would be as if they managed the business so badly that the CVS business was worth nothing, and Aetna is basically the same value that it used to be before they bought the company. So no major improvement for Aetna and a complete wipeout of the value of CVS, its own pharmacy business. That's a really rough estimation, but it gives you an idea. The Aetna lesson didn't deter Lynch and the board. In 2023, CVS made another hugely expensive deal, purchasing Oak Street Health, owner of over 200 centers in 25 states, providing care for the elderly, this time laying out $10.5 billion 30% or $2 million more than the target cap prior to clinching the purchase. Paying a 30% premium for something and like 30% more than the stock market value isn't necessarily a bad thing. But it would assume that there's a really good reason for doing that. Not just like, hey, I want to buy a company like this. Oh, that one looks cool. Let's just buy this one. If you're going to combine two companies, you know you're going to have cost savings. Or if you're able to take this Oak Street Health business and spread it out somehow throughout all the CVS stores, but you, you didn't just think like, oh, I'll just do it, but like you actually had a real way you could do it, like it could be implemented, obviously not by her, by someone who knew how to do things like this. That wasn't the situation. And it clearly didn't work out. Inexplicably then, CVS made still another big bet by acquiring Signify, a healthcare analytics provider for $8 billion. The Oak Street and Signify buy signaled that CVS was making desperate moves, adding big pieces to bolster the complex construct that Lynch conceived, but that it wasn't performing. There's another issue when you buy companies. Even exactly the same kinds of companies. Putting together two companies that do exactly the same thing is not necessarily going to work out very well. Even if you have like equal numbers of employees, one has 500 employees, another one has another 502 employees, you put the two of them together, each company actually does have its own culture, its own way of doing things, its own level of comfort. To combine those two things, even if you're not talking about layoffs or anything like that, it, it's not the same vibe, it's not the same assumptions, it's not the same comfortable environment that people are used to being productive in. To take two companies that do different things, and then combine them and say, I have this overall vision. I just hope it all works out somehow. And I'll just overpay for all of it with the shareholders' money. That's not going to work out. And it didn't work out here. And the way you actually get people to buy into things when you're trying to convince people of things or make a point with things is for everyone to kind of talk about what their circumstances are, but to agree on a shared idea. Like, Oh, you know what? There are a lot of things going on here, but let's go towards this vision together and get the buy-in there to get the vision going together. I doubt severely that this person was able to do that with any of these divisions. And in the meantime, she's out there telling the public and she's out there telling investors, hey, we're doing this and we're going to do that and we're going to re-engineer healthcare. And in the meantime, these employees are thinking like, oh, am I supposed to do this? Like, who's actually going to do all of this? And that makes the employees uncomfortable. You have to win people over when you tell them you want to have change. Whatever that change is, even if you're just the, quote, employee working there, it still feels like your company. It still feels like your work. There has to be so much communication going on to make a change actually work. And then still constant communication after that. And to think that they gave all of this responsibility to this person 
is just unfathomable. I don't see anything in her. On any of the reporting and research that I did putting together this piece, to think that she might be able to carry off one of the most complicated things that's ever been done in healthcare on a business model level, on a people level, on an operations level, completely not possible to do, not with this person. Elon Musk could do it. She can't do it. Lynch also kept changing her group of lieutenants at an alarming rate. It isn't clear if she kept choosing the wrong people for the wrong roles or was unable to get the talent she recruited to do their best work. Or which was most likely she didn't even understand what the operations were of what was going on because these are very complicated operations. It's not like oh, you're a dummy because you can't conceive of what's exactly going on at the health analytics division versus the health insurance division. These are super complicated things, all of them. And then to try to coordinate them all to one thing, completely impossible for someone at her level. From the spring of 2023 through this month, no fewer than seven top executives, all of whom she'd hired after officially taking charge in February 2021, left the company. The exodus encompassed the head of Aetna, who left after less than a year. The CFO, who statement cited health reasons, the chiefs of human resources, communications, healthcare delivery, and retail stores. The people that were heading up all the divisions left. And I'll tell you this, I don't have any inside information, but I do understand some things about business operations and communication. These people left because they could tell she did not understand her job. And she also did not understand what was and what was not possible. That's how you drive off that many top heads of that many divisions. Two other longstanding CVS executives exited as well, the general counsel and the chief marketing officer. And if that wasn't enough, the lofty, intricate blueprint proved beyond Lynch's capacity to implement. It was her predecessor, Larry Merlo, who launched the initial phase via the purchase of Aetna, the first time ever that a huge insurer combined with a pharmacy chain. Lynch extended the framework through her plan for bringing primary care to America's doorstep. Though the idea was a big one, CVS was getting a late start on the retail component since Walgreens, Concentra, and others, including Oak Street, were invading what promised to become a gigantic market. Besides, the culture formed from running drugstores clashed with the mindset required to manage a major insurer, making it difficult to combine Aetna's data troves with the folks CVS attempted to lure to its stores for primary care. The sudden drop in profitability for Aetna's Medicare Advantage arm further undermined the ambitious plan to meld the two businesses. In the last couple of years, CVS has made scant mention of the original health HUB's concept. The focus now appears to be building out the well-established Oak Tree Network. And according to at least one analyst, it's an excellent strategy. Quote, that initiative will drive their growth for the next decade, he says. Oak Street-style value-based care is still the future for CVS. The pharmacy division, the health services division she set up, and the retail are doing well. Aetna, their insurance division's profit margins collapsed as the federal government reduced their payments to Medicare Advantage. United and Cigna are both suffering too. That was unforeseen, but it happened just as Aetna increased its Medicare rolls by 300,000 seniors. That was either unlucky or an unforced error. This extremely personable, charismatic leader deserves great credit for developing and superbly articulating a vision. It may even turn out that Lynch just needed more time, but that was a luxury that, at least for CVS, was out of stock. Because, even as the article mentioned, you may have a great idea. You may actually even be borrowing someone else's great idea. Maybe it really was her great idea. But was it a great idea? No, it's not even a half good idea or a decent idea. If it can't be implemented, you have to be able to execute on all of these things. For her top executives to be leading her, the people in charge of these divisions, it tells you it wasn't them, it was her. If it happens once, who knows, it could be the other person. But if it happens with seven executives and then other executives, it's a clear pattern. The lady did not know what she was doing, and unfortunately, they gave her way too much authority to do way too many things, and they didn't demote her when they should have. Maybe there was something she was good at doing. That's what she should have been doing. Gender is not a qualification for a job. Being able to do the job, that's the qualification. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.